Welcome back to the program. I'm joined now by Paul Gatling. He is the editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal, part of the uh, suite of uh, great publications and news sources from talk business and politics. Paul, good to see you and good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks, Roby. Good to see you. Let's talk about what's uh, what's going on in terms of uh, you had a big Q&A with uh, Alice Walton, uh, the I guess now she's the matriarch of the uh, the Walton family there, but obviously the big founder of the Crystal Bridges Museum, and she's pushing for some new health initiatives in Northwest Arkansas. Let's begin with Crystal Bridges, which turned 10 years old this past week. Uh, in your Q&A with her, what, what is her reflection at the 10-year anniversary of that great museum? <laughs> Just how happy it's made everybody in the past 10 years. You know, we can we can discuss the financial impact and really the transformative impact of that museum, not only on Northwest Arkansas arts and tourism, but really for the state's arts and tourism. But um, uh, and her in her responses to one of our questions about the impact of the museum, she's just. Uh, excited about the number of people that have been able to visit the museum and keep coming to the museum and the number of people who, uh, who the museum uh, really makes happy. And so that was her big takeaway from that. What's next for the art museum? What does uh, the next five to 10 years kind of have uh, on the project board? Well, if you go to the museum grounds right now, about 120 acres, you're gonna see a lot of construction and that's twofold. One, there's a construction for a 50% uh, a uh, uh, increase in the museum footprint. They're adding uh, several hundred thousand square feet of, of space to increase uh, uh, capacity and, and welcome more people. Uh, so that's, going, that's due, I think, in 2024 to be completed. So uh, Crystal Bridges is growing uh, here at the 10-year anniversary. And then the other part that you'll see at the uh, entrance to the, at the museum, uh, that's where one of uh, Alice's uh, next real passions is coming out of the ground, and that's the Whole Health uh, Institute. That's going to be right there at the, at the front uh, of the museum. So a couple of big... Uh, uh, well, actually three projects too. There's a, a Marlon Blackwell project that's going to be there next to the Amazium that's on the Crystal Bridges ground. So lots of cranes and lots of orange and lots of dirt and just lots of construction activity going to be going on at Crystal Bridges here for the next uh, three to four years. Well, let's talk about the whole health institute that you mentioned there. This is partly her philosophy on how health care ought to be, um, I guess, processed as a country uh, for individuals, the system as a whole, kind of what, what is she trying to do in terms of not only regional health change, but really trying to change the whole approach to medicine? Yeah, it's, it's really something that, that you, like you say, it can be replicated. Uh, it kind of got its, its origin or, and its evolution really at the Veterans Health Administration um, from under the direction of Tracy Gaudette, who Alice has recruited to be the founding director of the Whole Health Institute. So it is replicable and it is something that she thinks Northwest Arkansas can really be a grassroots epicenter for this really transformative uh, change in, in the approach to healthcare, right? So, you know, that was one of the questions is, is where that interest comes from her, you know, what, what kind of spurred her, her, uh, her interest in, in, in jumping on this initiative to, um, you know, make that kind of a new focus. You know, we saw what she could do with uh, arts and tourism, you know, 15 years ago, 16 years ago with the idea of this world-class museum in Northwest Arkansas. Now for the past couple of years, um, you know, the announcement of the Whole Health Institute in Bentonville, um, earlier this year, the announcement of a uh, kind of a complimentary sister organization, uh, a Whole Health Medical School. It's going to be a degree-granting nonprofit medical school that's in Bentonville. Uh, first, that construction will start on that and next year, I think the first students in 2024 and first graduates in 2028. And then, um, you know, also a, you know, a partnership with the Cleveland Clinic that she's announced this year as, uh, you know, they're exploring ways to increase access to specialty care uh, in Northwest Arkansas. I mean, we, you know, I asked her a question, you know, my mind working, you know, a little farther ahead, you know, to me, my theory is that that's one day going to lead to a Cleveland Clinic location in Northwest Arkansas. Of course, Cleveland Clinic, one of the most highly regarded hospital systems, not only in the country, but in the world. Uh, but uh, yeah, Alice Walton is really uh, kind of turning her, her, her attention, her resources, 
uh, to these healthcare initiatives. And to me, it's very exciting because, like I said, we've seen what can happen when she focuses on arts and tourism and uh, brings a lot of people together to get some big, exciting projects done. And so now let's see, you know, as we celebrate the 10 years of Crystal Bridges, let's see where we are in 10 years uh, in, in healthcare in Northwest Arkansas and just see how Northwest Arkansas is regarded uh, in the, you know, national and maybe even international uh, healthcare community. This plays a little bit into health. Uh, there was a big announcement this week also uh, in your region of the state. Uh, the Northwest Arkansas Council names a new workforce housing director, Duke McClarty. Uh, housing, a big challenge for the region. It does play into overall health as well as just, you know, to, to handle the population growth in the region. What is Duke McClarty going to do? Well, it really his job is to kind of articulate uh, and maybe sound the alarm of how big this challenge is. You know, I, I think uh, I think the what a big problem is going to be is or not a problem but a challenge is you know if people live have a six figure income and they, they they hear the term affordable housing well that's not something that I'm worried about or that's not something that affects me the affordable housing crunch and maybe we're on the cusp of an even bigger crunch or a bigger challenge is something that could have a ripple effect throughout the region if the problem is not addressed right now so his challenge is going to be. Uh, build consensus and build strategies for uh, maybe even it, the specific cities. Each specific city is going to have housing, uh, unique housing challenges. So uh, he's going to bring stakeholders together and visit with community leaders and they've got to develop strategies for affordable housing for uh, workforce, you know, the teachers, uh, firefighters, police officers, health care providers, uh, the people who are being pushed out of, uh, you know, average home sale price now this year has gone uh, over $300,000 in the two county area. Uh, these people are finding um, uh, less inex inexpensive housing, you know, further away from the interstate corridor east and west of I-49. And so that's further away. That's more drive time. That's more commuting. That's farther away from amenities. Um, so the challenge for him is to articulate to uh, the public at large, and not just those who need affordable housing, but those who might be able to uh, help do something about it, that this is, a, this is a general problem for the region. So we need a, we need a general consensus on some strategies that, uh, that can address it and quickly. All right, he's Paul Gatling. He is the editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. He's got a great exclusive Q&A with Alice Walton. You can check it out at nwabusinessjournal.com. Uh, you can also find it through talkbusiness.net. Paul, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Ruby. All right. That's all for today's program. Thanks for watching. I'm Ruby Brock. We'll see you next time.